Well, believe it or not, there are still a few conservative professors out there in America, even in the state of California. Keith Fink is one of them. He's a lecturer in communications at UCLA. And he says students are being blocked from enrolling in his course, which is called Sex, Politics, and Race, Free Speech on Campus, because he does not agree with a conventional liberal point of view. We reached out to UCLA today, and they never responded, but provided a statement to us. Um, rather, they did not. The head of Fink's department, though, told the College Fix it's simply a matter of keeping class sizes under control. Professor Keith Fink joins us now from L.A. Professor, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. So what I found so interesting about this story, not simply that you're a conservative teaching at a big state school in California, uh, but that you're one of the rare tenured professors who's actually trying to teach more kids. <laughs> you want to teach kids. And you think they're preventing well, actually, you from doing so. Well, actually, I'm not tenured. Uh, my oh. status is a lecturer. I, t I teach four classes at the school. Uh, oh. I doubt there would be many professors in my shoes, tenured or not tenured, that would be brazen enough uh, to take on the university uh, when uh, the students' rights are repeatedly violated. Huh. Uh, so I'm not tenured. Well, you're braver than but, I yes, realized. I'm happy. Then. I'm, I'm happy. I'm. Well, I am, and, and that's a problem for UCLA. Uh, and I'm happy to teach hundreds of students. The, big, the bigger class you give me, happier to teach uh, as many as uh, can, can sit in a room. So your, your course is about fundamentally free speech, and you think that the university is intentionally, under the guise of its rules, preventing students from sitting in on your course. That's correct. I actually teach four classes. I'm one of the most popular teachers on campus with the students, not the administration. And the one I teach this quarter, ironically, is entitled Race, Sex, and Politics, Free Speech on Campus. When I teach that course, uh, I go over the principles that govern the First Amendment, uh, free speech, freedom of conscience, and I also go over due process rights. We spend a lot of time on sexual assault and the kangaroo campus court uh, proceedings. I use UCLA because my students, uh, you know, I know what keeps them uh, uh, engaged and entertained. I use UCLA quite often as concrete examples uh, in applying these principles. And UCLA is a microcosm of the macrocosm. They continuously and consistently trample students' rights. And we can go over just some, some uh, recent examples. The Kanye Western Party. These were fraternity and sorority members throwing a party at Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. There was an immediate rush to judgment because somebody thought there was a, a, somebody thought there was black soot on one of the students' face that it was blackface, and it, instead of according the students due process in investigating the facts, there was an immediate suspension on the fraternity. Worse than that, the administrators, as they do each and every time uh, one of these instances occur, they threaten the students in one of their email missives that they're immediately going to investigate this hateful, offensive speech and use all lawful resources for students to found to engage in intimidation or harassment. There is no offensiveness exception to the First Amendment. There is no hate speech uh, exception to the First Amendment. There is no uh, hateful uh, uh, exception to the First Amendment. Well, you, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't, wouldn't you imagine UCLA administrators would know that? You have a law school attached to the university, correct? Well, this is... This is, this is even more maddening. Uh, the culprits really are Dean Kang, Dean Gomez, who are both lawyers, and Chancellor Block, I don't know if he's a lawyer or not, they absolutely know the law. But they abuse the law, and these 18-year-olds don't know the law. Even if they knew the law, they would be uh, afraid to fight back. They use the law, uh, uh, they abuse the law, they twist the law, they send out these interim emails, which either chill speech uh, uh, that they don't like, uh, or they actually punish students that run afoul uh, of, of these types of policies that, that don't conform to their liberal ideology. So in the I'll give you uh, let me get, let me give you okay. another good example. There was uh, SJP and MSA, two student organizations on campus. There were posters linking them to Hamas. Now the university again came out and criticized these posters as being hateful, offensive. And if students were found involved, they would be brought up on conduct code charges. Again, for the points I just enumerated, that violates the First Amendment. The UCLA has a viewpoint discriminatory application of its own policies. Let's put aside for a second that it violates the First Amendment. Last week, in the Daily Bruin, there was an anti-Semitic cartoon of the worst sort. It was a standard anti-Semitic trope with Netanyahu with a big nose. 
and it had the Ten Commandments in the background, thou shall not steal, thou shall not murder, implying that right. Israel, uh, Israel will murder to achieve, to achieve its settlements. Not a word from the administration. How is this instance with the cartoon any different with the poster? It That's isn't. A it's, it's, a it's, just, it's just not consistent with their narrative. It's a great question, and all of this, it strikes me, proves the great lie of tenure, which is that professors need it in order to speak their minds, and yet you don't have tenure, and here you are bravely saying exactly what you think, and I hope that you're not punished for it. Keith Fink, thanks a lot for joining us. That well, no, really yeah, okay. We're, unfortunately, we're out of time, Thank but I hope you'll come me. back for another update on the UCLA campus, which sounds pretty florid.